Hello there. I'm starting with the good news first. UK unemployment continues to fall despite numerous economic strains. In the three months to August, the unemployment rate fell to 3.5%. That's what the Statistics Office ONS announced on Tuesday in London. This is the lowest rate since February 1974, so before my birth. Analysts had expected a stable rate of 3.6%. And according to the statistics office, the unemployment rate was one percentage point lower than before the outbreak of the corona pandemic. The employment rate was at 75.5% in the three-month period that ended in August. Wages and salaries continued to rise significantly at 6% as the statistics office further announced, but not as much as the inflation. However, there is also comparatively high inflation in Great Britain with an inflation rate of just under 10% recently. Like many central banks around the world, the Bank of England is trying to bring inflation down by raising interest rates. However, if there is still almost full employment and the British continue to consume heavily, it could become more difficult for the central bank to curb inflation. But Great Britain remains in emergency mode. Despite the recent interventions by the Bank of England, the British bond market is not calming down. On Tuesday, the central bank adjusted its emergency purchases to support the market for the second straight day. After increasing the purchase volume, they expanded the group of papers to be bought on Tuesday. In addition to long-term government bonds, the Bank of England now also wants to purchase government bonds that are linked to the inflation rate. In addition, the sale of corporate bonds will be suspended for this week. That was set by the monetary authorities. The central bank plans to invest up to £10 billion in government bonds every day by the end of this week. However, the maximum amount is now divided equally between long-dated government bonds and inflation-linked bonds. The reason for the change is likely to be that there were disruptions on the market for inflation index papers at the beginning of the week. Intervention by the Bank of England in this market is quite unusual, though. Renewed financial injections from the BOE sent pound sterling lower again on Tuesday. It was down as much as 0.5% on Tuesday at $1.0996. At the end of September, the pound had fallen to its lowest level in 37 years. The trigger was the government's tax cut plans. The central bank's intervention became necessary due to the budget policy of the new government under Prime Minister Liz Truss. And her new Chancellor of the Exchequer of Finance Minister Kwasi Kwarteng had announced an extensive tax and economic package that was not financed by any countervailing measures which caused great concern on the financial markets about escalation government debt and uncontrollable inflation rates. Truss, who focused primarily on wearing similar handbags and hats to her political role model Margaret Thatcher when she an, appears in public, is at the bottom of the polls shortly after taking office. The number of critics has also increased in her own party. After the announcements, British government bonds came under pressure, especially in the long maturity segment. The central bank had to intervene with support purchases at the end of September because pension funds threatened to get into trouble as a result of the deployment, uh, development. As later became known, the British central bank apparently prevented a financial collapse in the city with the emergency operation. Rising prices have plunged Britain into this crisis. Even with everyday things, many people have to make difficult decisions and a lot of German media report about this at the moment. They were around there a lot. In the UK right now, you hear a lot about people having to choose between heating and eating, says Gavin Edwards, welfare expert at Britain's, uh, Britain's largest union, Unison. And that's not an uncommon situation. It's happening more and more often. That's shocking in a supposedly prosperous country and one of the world's most important economies. Like much of Europe, the UK is going through a cost of living crisis, but much worse than the rest of Europe. Inflation is currently around 10%, but is expected to be even higher in the coming months. 
Food and energy costs have risen at their fastest rate in 40 years, and the wage increases cannot keep up. Even if the headlines are currently dominated by the effects of the Ukraine war or the unrest caused by the government's controversial tax cut plans. Above all, the human side and the human costs are terrible, says Edwards. And he said, I've noticed recently that people's shopping habits are changing. Oh no, that, that wasn't Edwards, that was uh, Robert Doherty. He's a social worker in Sunderland in northeast England, one of the poorest areas of the UK. The discounted parking lots used to be empty, but now they are full of people who only half fill their shopping trolleys. People have switched from the 80p bags of peas to the smaller 40p size. That to me is a clear indication that people are struggling, especially the pensioners here, he says. And he says, when I come by here, there are people who are over 80 years old and are freezing because they can't afford the heating. Doherty tells of a friend who lives in the same community and has nothing in his apartment but an electronic uh, or electric stove and a television. He's afraid of heating with gas and never turns on the light, so it's always pitch black. Despite this, he spends £13 a week on electricity because his electricity is built through a prepaid meter. The tariffs are significantly more expensive than for those who pay by direct debit. Doherty considers this to be usury. Independent advisory organization Citizens Advice estimates that by the end of the year, another half a million people in debt could join the millions already forced to use such prepaid meters. These cost even more in winter because the costs are not debited evenly over the year, as is the case with direct debits. People are faced with a choice. Eat or heat, says Doherty. With this government, everyone's disposable income is at risk and caregivers in particular have very little. After you've paid your groceries, all your major bills, rent and taxes, you are left with nothing, he says. He tells of nurses who haven't taken a vacation in 10 years and work 80 hours a week just to pay their bills. The impact on families and quality of life is devastating. People who can't work that long face a real dilemma. They could take a second job or go to the blackboard to meet and make ends meet, but those are their choices and it's that blatant. Studies by insurer Royal London show that the rising cost of living is forcing millions of people to take on additional jobs. However, working more hours is not a realistic option for many UK workers, with more than a quarter of full-time workers surveyed already working more than 48 hours a week. For those on the front lines of the crisis, the situation is grim. When I talk to nurses, they are just trying to keep their heads above water. I think we've normalized the misery in this sector in a way. That's what Edward said again. People are unhappy because they work as many hours as they can. They have to work overtime so they don't have time for their families. And even then, they just barely make ends meet, says Edwards. An economy cannot function in the long term, and above all, no systematically important part of the public service can. After a decade of cuts, the public sector is underfunded, and the number of unfilled nursing jobs is rising rapidly. And that's no wonder. The hotel and restaurant industry and retail, above all Amazon, have particularly courted nursing staff in recent years, sometimes even with specific job advertisements. They promise better wages and also entry bonuses. The crisis has long gone far beyond low-income earners and those on welfare. Inflation hits everyone with an average or low income, and even those with above-average incomes see how it affects their quality of life. And the new Prime Minister Liz Truss has only been in office for a little over a month. But with the mini-budget announced by her government, she immediately triggered another crisis. The, current, uh, the currency fell significantly, I uh, talked about this in this video already, and this has a direct impact on people. For example, rising interest rates are driving many buyers out of the market, which in turn has impacted the private rental sector. The cost of living crisis is hitting even those 
who work at the heart of government. The Public and Commercial Services, the PCES Union, has collected testimonies from more than 150 departments for work and pension officials. They found that many of them are without showers, heating and eating, or have to take out short-term loans to support their families while struggling with rising inflation and high energy bills. Eve, for example, is a mother of three and works in a government agency. She says, in view of the cost of living, I had to decide whether I wanted to heat my house for the children or buy new work clothes. And Carrie, an administrative worker, said she was forced to visit the local food bank because after paying her bills and buying some groceries, she ran out of money for the rest of the month. I have to overdraw to meet my family's needs, she says, and that's affecting the rest of the month. With the rise in energy prices, I'm really scared of using gas. I often skip a meal so my kids can eat some or and have something to eat. And that's how she describes her desperation. The PCS estimates that one in 12 officers is now using blackboards due to rising prices, a pattern repeated throughout the public sector. A new study of 150 healthcare executives found nearly half of hospitals have or plan to set up food banks for nurses. At a time when healthcare workers are already struggling with poor mental health due to stress and also debt and poverty, many carers would forego food while they work to afford clothing and food for their children. We see people suffering from extreme levels of stress and psychological distress, and this situation is only going to escalate. That was said by John McGowan, General Secretary of the Social Workers Union, the UK's largest trade union for social workers. 43% of members have difficulties paying their own bills. 25% expected to visit a food bank in the coming months, and these are professionals with a corresponding salary. And the aid organizations are now also feeling the strain. Charities and food banks are overwhelmed, says McGowan. These organizations, which are supposed to help those in need, don't even have the means to provide basic services. The food banks ran out of supplies because the demand was so great. With winter approaching, projected inflation, energy price hikes yet to come, and welfare cuts looming in real terms, McGowan expects many people's plight to worsen. He says, people are already saving on electricity and gas, but they are going to be wondering what else they can save on. They live in fear because they know that outstanding debts will be collected and some will then lose their homes and their families. The UK is currently a country where parents are not earning enough to feed, clothe or even wash their children. Free meals at schools are commonplace, but here too supplies are running low by the day. Caregivers are forced to sell their cars because they can no longer pay for the gas. Pubs and social centers, once the heart of the community, can no longer afford electricity and are therefore only open on weekends. Retirees are left in the dark because care homes can't afford to leave the lights on. One of McGowan's predictions sounds particularly scary. He assumes that warmth banks will become a reality in many places, so that cities offer places where people can warm up. A few years ago, we were laughing at, at plagues because we thought they were pretty rare, says McGowan. But now there are more food banks than McDonald's, and I expect heated benches to be the next thing that could become sadder every day. And unionist Edwards agrees. There's already talk of community warming zones like pubs, churches, community centers, so people can get together and warm up in the evenings. I'm pleased that responsible people are organizing this for those in need, but it shouldn't be necessary. We shouldn't need panels or community warming rooms, Edwards said. And actually, we wouldn't need it if we had a different political approach in this country. And he is very clear about that one. Such a different approach is being prompted by a series of nationwide campaigns. These aim to get to the root of the causes of the exploding cost of living. 
One is Enough is Enough, a coalition of unions, community groups, food poverty activists and left-wing labor MPs. They are demanding an increase in the minimum wage, a freeze on energy bills, a new law on the right to food, a rent cap and a higher tax on the wealthy. The Don't Pay UK campaign is more radical. They want to strike energy bills by having the signatories revoke their direct debit en masse. Pressure is to be exerted by threatening chaos and loss of profits. At the same time, one of the biggest labor disputes in Britain in 40 years is raging. Train drivers, nurses and lawyers are all on strike to shut down Britain and vent their anger at the high cost of living. After all, nobody should have to make the choice between heating their house or feeding their family. And you still hear my voice here. You know that I'm not healthy again. I'm still suffering from this really bad man flu. But the situation there is so bad. And this is my first channel I ever opened. And it has the topic of UK politics. And... Um, even if I can't do anything else on my other channels or the more videos I usually do here, I, beside being self-employed and needed to work as well, I think it's really important to talk about these things. And um, I'll soon hope to be back on my German channel as well, where I can tell you again what is happening here in Germany, because even if I complain a lot about my government and they are not doing a very good job at the moment in coordinating with our state governments, they are doing still far more than what's happening in the UK. We have a price cap on, on energy now. And everyone on welfare does not have to bother. Their heating is being paid by the government. So we will not have those people having to make the decision between heating or eating. And we're discussing this in my city here as well. People who will just get into trouble in a month for... Uh, because of their heating bill, they they probably it, it's not written down yet, but that that's what what people are talking about here. They probably will just get into welfare for one month to get rid of this energy trouble, and then they also don't have the, to make the choice between heating and eating. So even with me complaining a lot about this so-called traffic light coalition here, the people will get far more help and that's why it's important to talk about what's going on in the UK and it's important that this government does something about this in helping the people affected because I, I still see it in the comments on under my videos that a lot of people are already in trouble or really scared and if I would live in the UK at the moment I would be if I would still be living there as I did quite some time ago, I would really think about moving back to Germany if I haven't done it that time because of my job, but uh, that's a different topic. So I really hope for the people that this government will make a major U-turn because we are talking about people's lives. It's not about me having uh, fuel for the next years or so or with the Supreme Court going on now, of course, this government would help a lot for Scottish independence. And I'm a friend of Scottish independence. But we're talking about real people's lives here. And something has to happen. Even if it makes politics harder for others, doesn't matter. Sorry, Nicola Sturgeon, but it, that's the way it is. Those people do need help. And I really hope that they will get help. Even with all the other consequences for Scotland, Northern Ireland, whatever. This is the most important thing at the moment. And once again, you will not see anything else from me today, but I'll see you tomorrow morning. I'll be back.